There are two key uh, motivations for us at the Pacific Islands Forum Secretary to be uh, involved. One is the fact that um, there's need uh, for partners to coordinate their support uh, in the Pacific. And therefore, through this engagement, we have encouraged uh, our colleagues at the UN agencies to ensure that we uh, move into a coordinated approach. Secondly, it's an opportunity to ensure that our, our member governments are at the driver's seat ensuring that it's a member-driven process. As an organization set up to, to uh, look after the sustainable development goals of Pacific peoples and member states, um, this is an issue that uh, is of urgent importance and ASCAP hopes to continue to collaborate and bring together the various uh, member states and actors who work in the region to ensure that this framework is, uh, is robust and contains all the uh, life-affirming, life-giving elements um, that is required uh, for a framework such as this. From the perspective of the ILO, decent work and international labour standards are relevant to all aspects of climate mobility. So obviously those are really key for labour mobility, but also for displacement, relocation, all the forms of movement we see in the context of climate change, decent work and labour standards are relevant. And that's why in the last year of the program, uh, we've really uh, been honoured to have the opportunity to be involved in the discussions on the regional framework and um, to bring in the question of decent work and labour and the linkages there. So I think that's really key. And of course, in terms of the program itself, it's one of the flagship kind of joint programs in the Pacific region that brings together key UN agencies who are working really collaboratively, as well as PIFs and PDD, who are um, very important stakeholders in this area of work. Human rights in the Pacific is, is, is not a new or foreign concept. Um, its principles uh, and spirit and value is evident in many of our Pacific cultural practices and traditions. Um, for example, you know, the Talanoa, uh, care for the environment, respect for each other, uh, and the love and protection of all, uh, individual or communal. Uh, so it is important that we, as a human rights office, um, as a regional office, uh, continue to work uh, with communities, um, ensuring the principles of human rights and the context of the Pacific um, you know, are taken into consideration. One of the key components of this project is climate adaptation and mobility strategy. And as a labor standard setting organization, it's really important for our ILO to make sure that this work, international labor standards, and the social dialogue are key components of this uh, process. So these are the, some of the key issues that motivated ILO to work uh, uh, with, along with other partners within this program. We've been grateful, I think, through the course of this program to engage with a range of different governments, a range of different government ministries. Uh, of course, our program partners, PDD, SCAP, ILO, OHCHR, but also um, the civil society representatives, including advocates, uh, activists and champions, to really take this issue uh, forward and make sure that we, we recognize that climate change is indeed having impacts on mobility and that this is the core issue that needs to be addressed. Um, the work that we're doing towards the regional framework has really been an example of this joint collaborative approach um, and I think as an organization this has been uh, amongst the most uh, interesting but also appealing aspects of this work. It has raised awareness of the need for a greater focus on a human rights based framework um, that we hope that this program will eventually lead to. Um, and therefore we welcome and we support Pacific governments in uh, making sure that they uh, focus on these types of issues. So um, it's a very um, honor, it's a great honor for us to be part um, and parcel of this program which supports the Pacific in addressing these issues. One of the priorities we're looking at is the climate change. And as you know, our Secretary General Antonio Guterres talked about the climate emergency in the Pacific and many other seeds. So this is where we as UNESCO bring our regional expertise. We are the convener at the Asia Pacific level of all the members and all the stakeholders. So when we had the opportunity to work together with the Pacific partners, 
I think this is the area that we should focus in and we've been very proud to be part of this engagement in the last three years and we'd like to take it forward further with all our members and stakeholders because this is where we could show a tangible results and the impact for the people of our Pacific and to the children of our next generation. And this is exactly where the UN comes in and the Regional Commission, UN ESCAP, is in the best position to work with all these stakeholders at the regional level. And Pacific is our home here, so we are very much proud to be a part of it. I would like to acknowledge the uh, Pacific leaders, namely uh, Honorable Simon Kofe, the Foreign uh, Minister for Tuvalu, um, on his advocacy of the issue of climate change and how the, the program supported him in his uh, COP27 message uh, that went viral. Uh, also the Honorable Prime Minister of Fiji, uh, Josiah Burange Bainima Rama, uh, for his um, unwavering commitment to the program uh, to always uh, support us in our events uh, and most recently in our regional dialogue uh, on the regional framework uh, for climate uh, mobility. I would also like to acknowledge our donors, the UN Trust Fund for Human Security and the Government of New Zealand for their generous funding which have uh, enabled us to successfully implement the, the activities of the program.